The 18th of April 2022 is World Heritage Day, the International Day for Monuments and Sites. This year the theme is Heritage and Climate. The Derwent Valley Mills World Heritage Site is a great example of how we can learn to be more sustainable, taking lessons from our history and heritage. This short film outlines what we can learn from the past about sustainability, how climate change is impacting on this internationally important heritage site and what we are doing across the partnership to help tackle climate change. The Derwent Valley Mills World Heritage Site is in Derbyshire in the UK. In the 1700s, mills in the Derwent Valley used water to turn water wheels which powered machines to spin cotton and throw silk. It was the first time this had happened on a large scale anywhere in the world. They were the world's first factories and changed how things are made, how we live and how we work forever. The River Derwent runs in a valley from north to south with the mills and associated features sitting alongside it or near it, stretching from Matlock Bath in the north through Cromford, Belper, Milford, Darley Abbey and into Derby. The attributes and elements of the site that led to its inscription as a World Heritage Site of outstanding universal value are closely linked to climate and sustainability. There is much to learn from the past and what is happening here in the present. Water power. Across the Derwent Valley Mills, water power was harnessed to enable mass production. Initially from smaller sources, for example at Cromford, the water came from the Bonsall Brook and Cromford Sough draining the lead mines. Later, the full power of the River Derwent was engineered and harnessed through watercourses, aqueducts, leats and channels to power the machines at each site. Production was developed into a factory system, meaning fast cotton spinning, mass production, cheaper products and large profits for the mill owners. This industrial revolution brought many benefits, but also problems. Later, the factories from the Derwent Valley Mills were copied throughout the UK and the world and went on to be powered by fossil fuels, contributing to the climate crisis we face today. However, many of the mills in the Derwent Valley remained water-powered throughout their operational lives. This sustainable, water-powered past, with many of the existing water channels and engineering surviving, continues to provide green, hydro-powered energy to the mill buildings and the national grid. There are hydro-power schemes at Milford, Belper and Masson Mills in Matlock Bath, and new plans for schemes at Cromford Mills and Cromford Village. A real lesson of over 250 years of hydro, green, renewable energy supply. Water does, however, cause problems for the heritage of the Derwent Valley Mills. Climate change and an increased extreme weather incidents will increase the incidence and severity of flooding. This increases the risks, costs and damage to these important buildings and landscapes. Here you can see pictures of flooding events which have repeatedly impacted across the site, particularly on the basement at Struts North Mill in Belper. These pictures from February 2022 show the impact of the recent storms on the housing, communities, businesses, agriculture, the mill buildings themselves and the impact on the weirs and water structures from the floodwaters. Mitigating for the impact of increased flooding and tackling the causes of ch climate change will be vital to protecting this World Heritage Site. Social changes. The social changes that came with the building of the mills in the Derwent Valley changed lives forever and again has much to teach us about living sustainably. The mill owners needed workers who needed housing and feeding. The houses built used local materials and were constructed to high building standards. Education was provided in newly built schools and work, employment and social activities were all provided locally by the mill owners. A major contributor to climate change is the food that we eat. The past can teach us a lesson here in keeping our food miles and climate impact low. In the Derwent Valley Mills, houses were provided with strips of land and allotments, then known as tater pieces, in the rent books to grow additional food to enrich their meals. You can see here on this map of Belper, the land around Long Row in Belper with garden strips and the opportunity for extra gardens to rent. This would have been tiring, but welcome fresh air for the mill workers. Pigsties were also unavailable. Local markets were established to ensure the workers were well fed and did not need to travel for produce. The mill owners also established new experimental farming practices to feed their growing communities. Farms such as Daly Farm, 
Crossroads Farm and Moscow Farm all locally help to feed the communities. Here at Daly Farm, you can see water being piped at height from a reservoir on the far side of the road to service the farm. Moscow Farm was built as fireproof, with brick arch roofs with buildings and interiors arranged for efficient feeding and watering of the cattle. The Strutz family residence at Bridge Hill House in Belper had a small-scale model farm for testing ideas. They even had a number of glasshouses growing peaches, melons and vines. The tomato house used hot water in large pipes to heat and improve growing. Shops, such as Louisa Collett's Bel Belper Dairy on Bridge Street, Belper, would sell the local produce. At Cromford, schoolboys were taught how to make the most of the soil on the school's allotment. Agnes Strutt, George Henry Strutt's wife, who did many good works for the Strutt employees and wider Belper population. During the Crimean War food shortages, she established a communal kitchen at the mill to minimise food waste and distribute food fairly. In this Strutt map from 1805, you can see in blue John Gratian's field where he collected rich human manure from 50 mill workers' cottages in a cesspool at the top of his garden and ran it in small trenches to enrich his soil for vegetable growing. Gratian was able to grow carrots particularly on a large scale and they were most sought after. Although I think in modern times we would prefer other more pleasant types of composting and organic farming. The cotton used in the mills was picked and processed by enslaved African people, forcibly transported across the Atlantic and spun by women and children. We have many lessons to learn about global trade and the textile industry particularly, both past and present, remembering that current fast fashion trends have a negative impact on our planet and the environment. In the present day, many of the mills have been repurposed to provide places for local employment, including digital work and shared workspaces to reduce travel and commuting. There are still many allotments, enabling people to live sustainably by growing their own food, although the pigsties don't have pigs in anymore. There are local farmers markets and local restaurants and cafes providing local produce to continue to enjoy these places and spaces. Landscape. The mills and communities of the Dermot Valley Mills were inserted into the natural and agricultural landscape. In other places across the country, as the factories and production grew, large cities developed and the early buildings were knocked down. That didn't happen here. The valley was too narrow and steep in many areas to allow expansion and cotton production moved elsewhere, leaving this relic landscape relatively intact. Today, the landscape setting is a key part of the World Heritage Site and its buffer zone. It includes agricultural land, woodland, parks, gardens, meadows and wetlands, which are biodiverse and specially protected. This landscape is one of the reasons for inscription of this World Heritage Site. So as well as protecting it from inappropriate development, it also provides an important resource for tackling climate change. This natural capital can absorb, absorb and store carbon help to reduce or prevent flooding, and help to encourage biodiversity for nature and for the enjoyment of the public, improving health and well-being. Transport. Transport is a key part of the story of the Dermot Valley Mills World Heritage Site. From the early 1700s, pack horses were used for transportation of the raw cotton and products. Later, stagecoaches transported people and products on the toll roads, including on new road tarmac macadam road designs. The Cromford Canal was constructed and mainly moved coal and limestone across the country, including over the Pennines by the incline and railway workshops at High Peak Junction. Later, steam trains meant people could travel further and faster. We still use many of these roads and routes today. To help combat climate change, we're encouraging sustainable travel across the Derwent Valley Mills World Heritage Site. This includes the addition of electric vehicle charging points and some bus routes in Derby City having ultra low emission vehicles. We encourage visitors, including school groups, to take advantage of the Derwent Valley Rail Line to travel to sites viewing the fantastic heritage landscape as they travel to their destination. The Derwent Valley Heritage Way is over 50 miles of walking route from the Peak District National Park through Chatsworth, the Derwent Valley Mills World Heritage Site, ending where the River Derwent joins the River Trent near Shardlow. 
Work is also underway on the Derwent Valley Cycleway, looking to create an off-road cycleway between Derby and Baslow, passing through key parts of the Derwent Valley Mills World Heritage Site. On special occasions, you might even find an eco-friendly four-legged friend helping to transport you on the Birdswood trip boat along the Cranford Canal. Learning from the past to protect the future is key in the Derwent Valley Mills World Heritage Site, from hydropower to sustainable communities, caring for landscape and habitats to low carbon transport, we still have much to learn and do. Visit our website at www.derwentvalleymills.org to discover more, visit yourself or get involved. <laughs>